The possibility of Boris Johnson, yes indeed, the possibility of Boris Johnson returning to a cabinet position in government is not only chaotic but absurd given the tumultuous legacy that he left behind. Robert Jenrick's suggestion that Boris Johnson could be a valuable asset to a future Conservative cabinet reflects a desperation within the party to harness any perceived talent regardless of of the substantial wreckage that Johnson has caused and has left behind. This notion should be critically examined, especially considering the significant failings that define Johnson's leadership. Boris Johnson, be in no doubt, is an extraordinarily able and accomplished and experienced politician, but he carries with him the stigma of such unbelievable disaster. His prime ministerial ship was marked by a series of scandals, policy missteps and a general atmosphere of unpredictability and laziness eclipsing even the laziness of Liz Truss. The Partygate scandal, which ultimately led to his resignation, was emblematic of his disregard for the rules and the damage he inflicted on public trust. During a time of national crisis, Johnson was found to have flouted his own government's lockdown regulations, undermining his own authority and tarnishing the Conservative Party's already dented image. Beyond his personal scandals and the uh, Sophagate staining, Boris Johnson's leadership saw multiple policy failures. His handling of Brexit was riddled with inconsistencies and the casual disregard for the future. Lord Frost, appointing Lord Frost, that is an act of complete folly, and his approach to the Northern Ireland Protocol led to significant friction both uh, both domestically and internationally. His government's response to the COVID-19 pandemic was widely criticised, particularly in delay to lockdowns. The chaotic communication strategy and the cronyism evident in the allocation of government contracts. We don't even need to start talking about Baroness Moan, but she is a consequence of Boris. Moreover, Johnson's decision to resign as an MP in June 2023, claiming that the Commons inquiry was biased against him, further underscores his unwillingness to take responsibility for his actions. He is the father of Nigel Farage. Whenever there is blame, whenever the finger of blame is pointed at Boris Johnson, he deflects and says it's somebody else's responsibility or he doesn't acknowledge the authority. This is the fundamental problem. Everyone else is at fault except for Boris. It suggests a leader who prioritises his own narrative over accountability. And that is why Boris should never see power again. Be in no doubt, I like Boris. I've always liked Boris since when he was at Oxford. I met him on a few occasions, fairly, fairly often actually. So I think I know Boris. I've met his family. I was uh, I, I, at the last election, the 2019 election, I was in the green room with his father and his sister. Don't like his sister. Thought his father was an absolute delight. But Boris, I wouldn't allow him anywhere near the seat of power again. Because it's, the, it's what Boris brings with him. It's that welter... Of chaos and the impression that he gives that chaos and a free-for-all is acceptable it isn't it wasn't it shouldn't be and this is the impression Boris gives Boris has wonderful charisma he's always had it but he also has chaos and the country cannot sustain the liberal infection with chaos that Boris um, provides because it spawns people like Farage, Anderson, Liz Truss, Nadine Dorries, these people of chaos, these monsters of chaos, the Hecaton Heres, the one-eyed dolts, the Cyclopedes, and so on. It's always been the case. These great gods of chaos spawn disaster. Jenrick's association with uh, Boris 
is doomed if, if this is what he wants. His, his assertion that the Conservative Party needs all the talent involved is correct. But Boris is not talent. Boris is disaster. Boris is chaos. Boris is not order. Boris is disorder. Boris is hugely attractive, but look in another mirror. Boris overlooks reality. Boris is what we fear. Tohu the bohu. Chaos. The uncharted land. And Jenrick overlooks the fact that Boris's brand of leadership is precisely uh, what led the party into its current precarious position, but not only the party, the country. His return to a cabinet role would not only symbolise strength or unity, but also a regression to the very chaos that brought the Conservatives to the brink and brought the country to a standstill. The absurdity of considering Johnson for a cabinet position becomes even more apparent when one considers the damage done to the UK's international rep uh, reputation during his premiership, and because it wasn't just Brexit, it was also Boris. The combination of the two was the disaster. And yes, he was building on the chaos set up by the matriarch, Theresa May. We have had three major prime ministers of chaos and indolence. Theresa May, who spent a lot of time working and achieving nothing. Boris, who spent no time working and achieving nothing. Liz Truss, who was barely in the job and achieved so much that was bad. Three. And we can't afford to have any of them near the reins of power again, ever. It's got nothing to do with party allegiance. It's got nothing to do with whether I like or dislike these people. It's entirely to do with what they represent and what they bring. The dogs of hell. The hounds of disaster. And Boris's approach to foreign policy was erratic, even if it was inspired. So much of what Boris did or tried to do was good, but he could not disguise or hide the chaos that he brought with him. His commitment to global issues like climate change, excellent, but appeared inconsistent. Even his staunch support for Ukraine, while laudable, was overshadowed by his domestic failures and his inability, therefore, to hang on. Whatever promise he offered could not be followed up because he wasn't there. In the light of these points, the idea of reintegrating Boris Johnson into a leadership position should be seen not as a testament of his so-called talent, but as an alarming indication of the failure to see the correct direction by Robert Jenrick. If this is Jenrick's idea, Jenrick should never be given credibility. And I was on the cusp of thinking Jenrick might be a possible answer for the Conservative Party. No, 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 no. The Conservative Party, if it's to regain credibility and trust, must distance itself from the chaos and the scandal of the Johnson era. That means distancing itself from Pretty Patel, from everything that came with Boris. So it's not a choice between Johnson, um, Jenrick and Pretty Patel. All of them need to go. The Conservative Party needs a new start. And our Parliament needs a new broom. On the one hand, that's Keir Starmer, though he seems to think that quite a lot of the old needs to be um, needs to be kept. He's not talking about repealing laws which should never be made. We need. We need to close the door on the chaos of Johnson and Truss and May, not lever it open. Jenrick's willingness to welcome Johnson back, as expressed in his interview yesterday with the Daily Telegraph, is a miscalculation. It risks dividing the party further, alienating voters who have already witnessed the damage Johnson's 
leadership has caused, and it needs to look forward, not backwards, if it hopes to regain any footing and present itself as a viable alternative to Labour in the next general election. And meanwhile, if it's prepared, if it's able to do its job, because it has a job as His Majesty's loyal opposition, at the moment it can do nothing, and I don't see that Boris, anywhere near the front bench, brings anything except for a memory of the past.